this time I wanted to talk about a gun that I've always wanted. Um, I always thought it was like the coolest thing ever. Uh, <laughs> not the most practical gun, but I just so much fun. Uh, I, I get off on the history of it, the, the function of it, the mechanics, the uh, just everything about it. it just, it's just like one of those guns I've always wanted and now I, now I, now I finally have. Um, it's a Craig Jorgensen. It's, let's go back in time. Um, the US military, they had the Trapdoor Springfield shooting a 4570. Um, they wanted something lighter, faster, um, repeater. Um, they came up with a, well, they came up with the Craig Jorgensen. So think about 18, 1892. The US military's got that Trapdoor Springfield, which is basically a single shot, big bore, black powder. You come to the Craig Jorgensen, it's now a 30 caliber. It's a bolt action, it's a repeater, it's got a magazine capacity of five, and it shoots smokeless powder. So huge, huge leap, huge leap forward. Um, going from that trapdoor Springfield, you know, big bore, black powder, to now we've got a bolt action, uh, magazine fed, um, smokeless powder, high velocity projectile, like like light year jump. Um, and it's it's just, just the coolest thing ever. It, it was loaded at this, it's like, it's like there's a, a it's like there's an ashtray hanging off the side of your your rifle. It's fed from the side. So what you would do is you dump your shells in and close it up and follow it, push them up around the bolt, go underneath it and over. And it's kind of a kind of a complex little device here. Um, but the reason the military went with this design is you could load shells without opening the bolt. If you had you know a, a Mauser type or your typical bolt action rifle, you open the bolt and you feed the mag you know feed the magazine from the top. Um, it was thought that having the ability to keep the bolt closed or keep a round chamber, open it up, top off, was, was going to be a big advantage. Um, I don't think it ever was. Uh, and it was kind of one of those things that, you know, it was immediately replaced by the 1903 Springfield, which was stripper fed. You know, it did have a, a different bolt uh, design. Um, you know, the magazine was you know, vertical instead of off to, the, off to the side like this one. But it's still just one of the, one of the coolest guns ever. This is, um, like I said, it was the first military in the U.S., the first military smokeless powder rifle. So it was called the 30 Army, um, but civilians, everybody else, just kind of knows it as the 30, 40 Krag, 30 caliber, and it was 40 grains of smokeless powder. Um, so the nomenclature is just like the 30, 30. Um, the 3030 was you know, 30 caliber, 30 grains of smokeless powder, and that was on the you know the, the uh, civilian rifle in the, in the Winchester 94. Um, now there's another comparison I'll make to that uh, gun here in a bit. Um, this gun has a terrible reputation of being weak. Oh, it's got a weak action. It's got a weak rifle. It's a weak ca you know, cartridge, and that's just not true. Okay, um, it's not weak. It's just there are stronger uh, rifles out there. There are better designs. Okay, doesn't make this a bad one. It just there are better ones. Um, the the locking lug for the bolt is at the rear of the bolt. It's not at the front like your modern day Mauser. Um, so, you know, you can't take the high pressure like a like a like a, like, a, like a Mauser action would. But it doesn't make this a bad action. Um, if you look at that Winchester 94 again, you know that's a contemporary, you know, 1894 versus 1892 version of this. Um, if you look at the locking lugs in the 3030, that, that Winchester uh, 3030 Model 94, the locking lugs are also at the rear. So it, it's, it's not totally uncommon um, to have that uh, design. And you look at you know, the deer rifle, you know, the greatest deer rifle ever made is probably that Winchester 94 and 3030, um, which is, you know, you're shooting a 30 caliber, uh, 150 grain bullet at about 1900 to maybe 2000 feet per second. Okay, on the low end, um, I can shoot the 150 grain bullet out of this at 2,300 feet per second. So it's actually bigger, better than the 3030, and it gets a reputation as being weak. I, 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 I never could figure that out. Um, you know, it's a wimpy cartridge, wimpy round, but it's really not. Um, you know, it originally came out in a 220 grain bullet. Uh, it was a round nose, which was probably slower and had, had poor tra trajectory. But if you're going to shoot a 150 grain bullet at 2,300 feet per second, it, you're not undergunned for deer or for anything else. Um, the problem is, it's fine in the ammo. Um, so I picked the gun up. Love this. Um, just a beautiful old gun. It's in great shape. 
it's stamped. There's the, 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 the it's, it's stamped 1901. So this thing's been around a little over 120 years. Um, but the handle is getting hard to find. So what I did is I went to my Lyman catalog and I said, well, what are reloads for it? Because I had some Lee dies in 3040 Crag. Like I said, I used to have a 3040 Crag here about 20 years ago, uh, closer to 30 years ago. I'm, I'm getting old. Um, but I pulled my Lyman manual and there's reloaded, you know, reloads for the 3040 Crag. And the very first one I come to is a 150 grain jacket and bullet which I happen to have on a shelf that I would reload for the 30 odd six. One of the powders it recommends is Reloader 15, which I happen to have, I already had this. So I have 150 grain bullets, I have uh, Reloader, I have large pistol primers, I just, you know, something I've stocked up on for years. Um, I had the dies, all I needed was some brass. So I went on, um, I went to gun broker and I found somebody had 40 rounds of brass, got unfired, un, unused, brand new brass, new old stock kind of a deal. Um, so I took it, <laughs> took, I, I took advantage of that deal, bought the 40 rounds, got them, and I reloaded seven rounds. You're going, John, why seven rounds? Um, <laughs> with lucky seven, but also too, what I wanted to do was I wanted to reload seven. I didn't want to load all 40 and then find out it's a load I didn't like or was going to be hard on the gun. Or So I, what I did, I went to the minimum load, which was 40 grains of re reloader 15, which was the minimum, you know, the starting load. So I loaded seven grains at uh, 40, uh, 40, 40 grains of reloader 15, 150 grain bullet. I wanted to see how the gun was going to work and how, what kind of accuracy I could look at. And I'm not going to hot rod this old gun. It's not going to be my deer rifle. It's not going to be my bench rest rifle. It's not going to be a precision gun. That's a good place to start. I, I, I want to shoot it. I don't want to beat it up. So I loaded up, like I said, seven rounds, <laughs> drove out to the range, and just had a blast with it. So the, the cool thing, even though it's a rimmed cartridge, you don't need to worry about rim lock. You just literally just drop your shells in. It orients itself. The follower is going to push it up. It's all ready to feed in. It's loaded, it's smooth as silk. Ejects nice. Next round. I missed that one. <laughs> you can see it's just a it's just a fun gun to shoot. It's got the smoothest bolt action ever. Um, kicks the shells out nicely, not a lot of recoil, um, 2,300 feet per second, still pretty flat shooting. Um, got some decent accuracy out of it. Um, now I can load up more rounds, have, I could probably load all 40 now, knowing that that's a good, that's a good powder weight um, for this, for, at least for this, this rifle. And like I said, it was, it's, it's, the, it's a minimum, it's, it's, the, it's the starting load. So I didn't have to work up a load. Like I said, um, almost all of my targets are stationary and they're made out of paper. Um, I'm not, a, I'm not taking this deer hunting. I'm not taking this, you know, down the hall for, you know, when I hear a bump in the night, this isn't my, this isn't my home defense gun. And it's not my hunting rifle. Um, it's not a bench rest rifle. It's just a fun gun to shoot. And that's all I did. Um, you know, when I take it out, I think about, you know, Hey, this is what Teddy Roosevelt was carrying when he went up San Juan Hill, right? Well, you know, not this one, this, this one came out, like I said, 1901, it missed the Spanish American war and Teddy Roosevelt's guys were carrying a carbine. Um, and this is the rifle version, but it was the same action. It was that Craig Jorgensen action. Uh, so I let, I get off on down, on down the history of the gun. Um, so now I've got this historical, beautiful rifle. It's in great shape. Uh, like I said, it, it missed the Spanish American War. Probably sat in a warehouse for years and years um, until I got it and now I can shoot it. And I've got ammo for it. I've got powder for it. I've got bullets for it. I can go out and enjoy a rifle. Um, and that's, that's the reason I shoot, because uh, I enjoy it. That's the reason I have my guns, because I enjoy them. And I'm able to do that with this one. Um, there's a ton of history. I, there's other guys who know a hell of a lot more than I do. Uh, seek them out if you want to find out. But like I said, if you're just looking for a, a good gun to shoot, a fun thing to do, don't look past the Craig Jorgensen. If you get a, you know, grandpa's old, you know, modified uh, uh, sporter version of it and you get, get old of that, have fun with it. Go out and shoot it. Um, it was the first smokeless rifle in the, for the U.S. Army. It was the first bolt action rifle for the, for the, for the uh, American military. Um, you know, it's just, just, yeah, 
It's a great gun to have. I'm glad I have it, and I'm going to keep on shooting it.